It was August 24th when the Ukrainian diaspora and other supporters of the Ukraine were celebrating the Ukrainian Independence Day in front of the BC legislature in Victoria, British Columbia. I was there with my camera. Here's what I saw. But first, maybe an introduction. Your viewing travels with Lobo, now with the completion of my 35-part series, Thailand from the North, from my hometown of Victoria, British Columbia. Remember, a vlog is published every Friday. Before getting into the Victoria, B.C. Ukrainian Independence Day celebrations, I give you a bit of background on the Ukraine. Have a look. In terms of landmass, Ukraine is the second biggest country in Europe after Russia. In terms of population, it's 11th in Europe. Ukraine officially declared its independence from Russia on August 24, 1991. That coincided with the collapse of the USSR. Ukraine was formerly part of the USSR, as was East Germany and many other places. Now, the USSR, or Union of Soviet Socialist Republics, was created in 1922 and, as I say, lasted until 1991. The worst day for Vladimir Putin who has been plotting during his presidency how to make Russia great again. The last leader of the USSR was Mikhail Gorbachev. President at the time was Ronald Reagan. They negotiated the end of the Cold War, but it also brought about the fall of the USSR. Sadly to say, on this very date of August the 30th, 2022, Mikhail Gorbachev passed away at the age of 91. It will be interesting to see what kind of a burial Putin gives to Gorbachev. Now, getting back to Putin. A good start to making Russia great again would be to annex the Crimea, a part of Ukraine, now part of Russia in 2014. The unrest in Crimea was followed by unrest in southern and eastern Ukraine. These were Russian-speaking parts of Ukraine. In the same year, Ukrainian separatists declared the Donetsk People's Republic and the Lugansk People's Republic in eastern Ukraine after a referendum in 2014 in which they say 90% voted for independence from the Ukraine to be part of Russia again. A low-key civil war has been taking their place ever since, or at least until the invasion. Now, Ukraine's history in government has been anything but calm and tranquil. It's been tumultuous and upheaving, to say the least. But on April 21st, 2019, Volodymyr Zelensky, the former actor, was elected president in a second round of presidential elections. That was a game changer. Much to the world's surprise, he did not accept the American invitation to be evacuated from his country when the Russians invaded. Instead, he put on a textbook demonstration of how to react to an invasion. The rest is history. Russia invaded on February 24th, 2022, six months ago, with a blitzkrieg designed to capture Kiev. That blitzkrieg started in Bucha, just north of Kiev. Uh, the Soviet army was expected to be welcomed with flowers and open arms. Instead, they found unbelievable devastation, devastation, devastation. This had to be one of the great victories of the Ukrainian war. Uh, this initial repelling of the Soviet army, it may not last, but it was an initial success. This invasion, which is now uh, into the sixth month, was perpetrated by a masterclass in propaganda, 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 free the Ukraine from Nazism. Oh my God, propaganda. Surprisingly, 80% of the Russian population buy this bullshit, uh, bullshit propaganda. There is no end in sight to this conflict, and, uh, and uh, what can you say? Now, let's get to the Independence Day celebration in Victoria. 
can't uh, can't read the bottom word. What what's the bottom word? Ukraine. Oh, Ukraine. Yeah. <laughs> It is truly my hope that a year from now there will be something to celebrate, something called the independence of Ukraine. Uh, Thank you for viewing, and uh, we'll see you uh, next Friday. Next Friday, uh, a topic uh, much more delightful, full of flowers and beauty and uh, a far cry from this invasion of, of the Ukraine. So... See you next Friday. Thank you for viewing from Travels with Lobo.